good morning. It's 10 o'clock. Today is Friday. I love you. I love you. So um, I mounted you guys on my tripod because um, we need to talk. And I thought we could open some packages while we chat in my fancy leopard robe that was in my holiday gift guide. So um, yesterday, I think we dropped off on, we picked up Wesley and that was it. We came home and I can't believe I like show my face like this in front of you guys. This is unconditional love. You seeing me like this and accepting me in my natural form, like Bobo does. Um, okay, so we came home. Wesley was just totally out of it. So we came home and we um, had dinner. We gave Wesley extra cuddles and I may or may not have fallen asleep by eight o'clock because that's just how we roll. This morning when I got up, it was one of those mornings where I told you guys yesterday, you're like, oh, I'm so caught up on life. I'm so good at this adulting business. I don't know what people are complaining about. And then you realize you're really not. So um, there were so many little random things that I had to do around the house, like garbage bins were full and no one was taking them out. So I went around the house on this rampage of like collecting all the trash and putting away the rest of the laundry and making beds. So I went up there and I was like, oh, the bed's not made. So I made the beds you guys. I also uh, posted a video last night, um, my product empties, and I didn't do any engagement last night. So there was no um, replying to your comments, giving you little hearts or anything like that. So I sat on my computer. I did that for almost two hours this morning. Um, replied to all your comments in that video. There were some links in videos that weren't working. And I was like, here, go to this video and check the back loofah. And then the link wasn't working. Y'all, I'm a mess. I didn't even get to open this stuff yesterday. And it's super random. But I was like, isn't that what vlogs are? Literally what I'm doing. So you get to see it. I have a couple of packages. Two are from Amazon. One is from Sephora and one is from Chewy. And I thought it would be useful because I'm always talking about my dogs. This is the special food they get. It gets delivered to my door every, uh, probably once a month. I don't remember what my auto ship is set to. So their food, a little haul that I did with that very last coupon that um, Sephora gave before the end of the year, which took forever to arrive apparently. Um, and then I don't remember what's in those Amazon boxes. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Are you so prime hard that you forget what's in your prime boxes? I think I am. That noise you hear is Roomba. She's getting really close to the door. So I wish I could redirect her through the app, you know, like, hey Roomba, you need to move. So I'm just gonna turn her off for a second. Anyway, yeah, it's so, such a busy but productive morning. I also placed a Thrive Market order. Um, I love that, I love Thrive Market. Anyway, I don't know why I'm talking about Thrive Market right now. Anyway, it's not sponsored by the way. Um, although I am working with Thrive Market for the next four months, so look out for that. Um, let's jump into this. I think we'll do the big box just because it's big. This is the dog food, the only dog food that has worked for all four of my dogs. So uh, for the dogs, we get the uh, Simply Nourish limited ingredient diet for seniors. Um, all four of my dogs are special needs, but three of them are seniors. So the three little ones, Sophia, Wesley, and Totopo. Wesley and Sophia are 11 and the double's 13. So they're on the senior food and the bites are really, really little. Their hair doesn't stink, their hair doesn't fall off, their hair is super shiny. Um, I really like this food. We found this food at PetSmart, but Chewy carries it. And it was so lame because we couldn't find this at our local PetSmart. We'd have to drive one county over to find the senior version. And then one of you guys told me, uh, Chewy carries it, why don't you just have it delivered to your house? And I was like, who are you? And I want to adopt you. <laughs> so uh, we get it shipped now, we don't have to carry it. Um, it gets delivered to our door, we never run out, it's awesome. However, for the little ones, it only comes in little bags like this. And I have three little dogs. So we have to order two bags at a time. Oh, here's a picture of the kibble, you can see it right there. That's the actual size, is that actual size? Yeah, that's actual size of it. Maybe a little bit smaller, but it's um, salmon and sweet potato. And then for Mern, my big girl, ugh. just pretend I have amazing, amazing upper body strength, okay? You guys just be like super impressed. Ugh. 
that was an embarrassing. This is the one from Mern, and Mern's comes in a big bag, but I think it only comes in a big bag because she's a big dog, and they're big kibble bites. Um, this doesn't look like actual size. I think it's a little bit bigger than that. But it's basically the same food, limited ingredient diet, uh, salmon, soy potato, but for regular dogs, not senior dogs. I don't know if there's a really big difference when it comes to... Um, Senior versus regular dog. Do you want to tell them what the difference is between the senior food? Hmm? Do you want to tell them? You can, you can read the label. You can read the label and tell them what's different. What do you think about that? What do you think about that? What do you think about that? Hmm? What do you think about that? This is like the most long, informal, random haul of life. The Sephora package, I don't remember what I got. I do remember I didn't need it. And I also remember I was really excited. So... Like most purchases you don't need, they're the most exciting to receive. So this is from Sephora, and I had a 20%, oh, I remember. Um, I've been wearing this lip color a lot, and it's been very aggravating because I'll wear it and then I'll put it in my purse, but then when I go upstairs to get ready, it's not there anymore. So with colors like Hitchhike from Urban Decay, Ex-Girlfriend from Urban Decay, or Fenty Gloss Bomb, the original one, the very first gloss, um, I have two. And I have a purse one and I have an upstairs getting ready one or in the bathroom. So this is the lip stain that I've been using a ton. I use it all fall, all winter, and it's from Buxom. And it's in the shade Make Out. So I just got a second one of those. Um, I love it because it's buildable and I also love that it wears gracefully. The buildable part though, it's kind of trippy. You apply a thin layer, it's almost like a rosy nude and you keep going and you could get it as deep as like a light wine or burgundy shade. It's pretty, it's pretty trippy and it's like a mauvey wine. It's not a red wine, it's not a burgundy shade. It's almost like a rosy purpley fall shade anyway just it's in a ton of my videos you guys <laughs> you're embarrassing your mama right now you are you're embarrassing your mama right now papo por qué estás tan guapo por qué estás tan guapo eh por qué eres la cosa más bonita que me ha pasado en toda mi vida por qué eres la cosa más consentida de todo mi corazón por qué eres la pulga más pulga de toda mi vida por qué eh por qué eres la cosa más perfecta do you want to show the next item? Show them the next item. What is this? What is this magicalness? Oh, do you want to show them the next item? Come here. Come here. He's like, I just want the dog food. What's going on over here? All right, you guys. This was so cool. I had to get two. <laughs> because I'm ridiculous. So this is the limited edition sponge from Beauty Blender. I got two um, because when they say limited edition, it gives me anxiety um, and I don't want to, it gives me like FOMO anxiety. Um, this is one of those, oh, it's changing color just on touch, on contact. Does that make my hands are moist? So this is the new sponge. I'm not gonna touch it. This is the new sponge from Beauty Blender. And it's supposed to cue you when your sponge is wet. So normally it's purple, but apparently when I touch it, it changes color already. So it really is sensitive to moisture. I'm almost tempted to wanna lick it. Um, but that would be very, very weird. But you can see, let me show you guys. <laughs> Let's open both because why not? So purple, right? And then I don't know if it changes based on moisture or temperature because okay, I'm holding it. I'm holding it. I'm holding it. It changes color. So my hands aren't wet right now. That <laughs> that would be weird. You can see what it looks like when it's not See how dark the purple is? But then I just touch it and it changes color. How trippy is that? They should make all beauty blenders like this because why not? Um, it's called the Shade Shifter uh, Beauty Blender Sponge. Color changing, wet me to prep me. Maybe, it, maybe I just misunderstood. 
maybe it just changes colors because it wants to not necessarily because it's wet you know what i mean hey it wouldn't be the first time that i was giving you guys wrong information am i right um and that's it that's all i got at sephora and i just talked for like 10 minutes on three different products then bum -bum, we got something in here what is this we're moving on to amazon this is fun this is i feel like i'm opening my packages with company you know instead of just at the floor of the entrance of my house it's my little cutter oh i remember this okay so i have a collection of willow tree dolls or figurines um if you're not familiar they're adorable and i found them years ago um at a hallmark store when i was looking for like a mother's day present or something for my mom i still live in california and so i started to realize that around the house i have a lot of willow tree figures that are like me and the boys just the boys a boy with a golden heart so it's all me and the boys the boys have one of me holding two um boys in their bedroom then i have another one that's me holding a baby boy and then a little like a I don't know a young school-aged boy holding a golden heart so there's a lot of willow tree me and the boys related around the house and i was like this isn't good enough danny you need to step up your game so bam how cute is this it's a dad with his two daughters isn't that precious plus he's handsome the girls are a little bit young in here but i don't think it's necessarily in um like an accurate depiction like it's not is it accurate it's more of the sentiment behind the figurine so for example this figurine is called my girls which i really like and then you guys this vlog is gonna be so long and ridiculous oh i forgot about this this is a package for me and the P. Um, hopefully he doesn't see this vlog. Um, holy moly, this book got demolished in shipping. So I don't know if you guys know about Gary Chapman. He is a Christian minister, maybe, but he's also an author. Um, so he wrote the amazing, life-changing book, The Five Love Languages, right? It helps you figure out how you give love and how you interpret receiving love. For example, I feel loved with words of affirmation and physical touch. So if you give me a gift, I'm like, that's nice, but it's not necessarily my love language on receiving love. The way I give love is usually um, acts of service and gifts. It's, I don't know, I grew up with parents that weren't very affectionate, so if I'm affectionate, I feel weak sometimes. And so it's hard for me sometimes because Parker's love languages are the same as mine. So he feels love if I tell him he's handsome, if I tell him he did a good job, if I tell him, you know, how special he is to me, like words of affirmation um, and uh, physical touch. So we have the same love languages to receive love. To give love, it's different. Anyway, I found this book by the same author and it's called um, Love Language Minute for Couples, 100 Days to a Closer Relationship. We're not in trouble. <laughs> Our relationship isn't in trouble, but we do love to do stuff, um, especially when the kids aren't here, to bring us closer together. So if you guys are in the demographic of empty nesters, so your kids have moved out, gone to college, or have gotten married, you have that gap between the the romantic couple in the relationship the parents right so we have an empty nest often and so we need to get reset into the hey it's just us let's remember what it's like to enjoy each other's company without kids present so it is a relationship shock to have all four kids, to have two sets of kids, another set of kids, you know, so we'll have the boys sometimes, we'll have the girls sometimes, we'll have all four kids sometimes, and then we'll be alone sometimes. So it's such a hard wave to stay on, um, and stuff like this really helps us stay close together. So this book had really good reviews because it's 100 days where um, you discuss different topics, it is scripture based so if you're not really religious it might not be something you enjoy but let me give you guys a preview um day one is about communicating love so it'll have scripture 
um, it will give you a prayer you can say together and then it talks about that topic in depth so it's educational it's religious it's scripture it reaffirms your connection with each other and with God um, but it also opens the doors of communication to talk about that specific topic so before bed we'll start day one we will read scripture we'll say the prayer together we'll read the topic of communicating love and then hopefully that triggers communication between the two of us on hey let's talk about this are we communicating love effectively? How can I communicate it with you better? Um, what do I do really well? So um, another thing or another topic would be maintaining a positive attitude, respectful communication when it doesn't come naturally. That's for me. I mean, you guys, <laughs> damaged goods, okay? I was lucky enough to find Parker because he's the only man that I've ever met in my 35 years that has the strength, the wisdom, and the patience to help me unpack. The only man, and that's, that's a big statement. Um, affirming and disagreement, anyway, the book is genius. The other thing that I got was uncommon questions for couples. This is um, kind of like a little box we would have out on the dinner table. We have a ton of these sets already. We have questions um, for children. We have communication or conversation starters for kids, conversation starters for families, conversation starters or questions for couples, a ton of these. We use them very often at the dinner table whether the kids are present or it's just the two of us, but the questions get stale, so we need a little refresher. And I think this set was like six or seven dollars. And I think it has, what, 100 or 200, 200 cards. It's basically just a way to have a conversation. It gets really easy to forget how to have a conversation because you're like, did you get the groceries? Did you put away the laundry? Um, did you pick up the kids from school? Was work okay? Awesome. But there's never that it's hard to have that organic conversation of like, when was the last time you really like laughed super hard? What's the last memory you have where we had the best meal and it forces you to like go back into your memory bank and have a really good conversation? For example, what is the best meal your significant other has cooked for you? I may not be aware that, you know, a meal that I make is Parker's favorite and he looks forward to it because he hasn't told me. So this kind of, gives me insight and helps him remember. Um, what old habits have you phased out of your life? What is a word or phrase you previously used a lot but haven't said in years? So there's a lot of phrases that I should stop saying. <laughs> what smell do you find pleasant that most people find revolting? Ooh, that's a really good question. Anyway, 200 uncommon questions, like a revolting smell, that you could just take out, have on the dinner table for date night, for before bed. You could have this on your nightstand or in like your dresser drawer. And when you're like, we need to reconnect. We need a little refresher. What can we do? Bust out your box, take out your book, which I don't know, <laughs> I don't know where I left it. Take out your book and have a conversation. Anyway, you guys, that's my couple's pontification. I think um, looking back at my previous relationships, even my previous marriage, it's very easy to walk away from conversations. It's it's the easy thing to do is to walk away and to avoid a conversation. I think the hard thing to do is to start the conversation. But once the conversation is started, it's very easy to have it. You know, it's starting it, it's opening that door. And I think you get so caught up in your daily life of planning and looking into the future and worrying about the day to day um, routines and chores and um, obligations that you lose the zest for a relationship. And I'd like to keep it fresh before it gets stale. You know, the funny thing is when I think about it um, and I ask the kids like, hey, let's play a game. What do you want to do? My oldest son, he'll be eight in a few weeks. Um, he always goes for the um, question for kids deck. And it'll ask him, you know, what's, what's, uh, the last time you you had a belly laugh or who's your best friend at school so it's kind of a way to get insight on your kids especially because I don't feel like they're really open communicators when they're at any age really <laughs> and the questions are also cool because like little guys can participate too anyway that's my haul and that's my long long 
long Friday introduction. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll make sure to link all of these things in the description box below, like those magical beauty blenders. Um, but how, how cute is this? Am I right? Anyway, um, today, okay, you guys, I chickened out on bra shopping yesterday. And when we were driving home from picking up Wesley, Parker was like, why is it so challenging? And I was like, I can't think of one comparable topic for men as bra shopping for women is. And I don't mean because I had explant and I don't mean because my boobs are different now. I just mean in general, the concept of bra shopping, is it going to fit? Is it laser cut? Does it have lace? Is it a push it bra? Are the, are the straps too thin, too thick? Are they racer rack? So I was like, I can't think of an example where you would equate the challenge that bra shopping is. For example, racer back bras give me a back and neck like a back of my head, neck, pain. It's weird. Why? I don't know, but I can't use racer back bras. And now, before, I was like a classic 32 double D. Anywhere I would go, it would fit, but because they were perfectly symmetrical silicone bags. Now, we're not perfectly symmetrical. I am borderline 32A or 32B. I have to try stuff on and it's gonna be one of those things where I could come out, you know, rocking out and just feel amazing. Or I could walk out in a pile of tears, completely demoralized and thinking I'm never gonna find a bra ever again in my life. I'm trying to set up traps where I can justify avoiding it. But today, um, I have a lot of work to do here at the house and you know, with coffee break with Danny. Um, but he's like, I have to take my car back to the dealership. I'll be home by 3.30 and we're going bra shopping. So that's what I have to look forward to this afternoon. So I don't know if I should take some calming supplements beforehand. I don't know if I should have some cheesecake beforehand, or I don't know if I should take a couple of shots of Fireball beforehand, but I have to do something so that I could be in the right state of mind for trying on like 72 bras. But for now, I need to take a shower because I feel like I stink and my hair is greasy, um, and that's it. I'm sorry, I just took 25 minutes of your time. 25 minutes of this vlog will be a random haul and a little insight on my relationship. You're welcome. <laughs> you guys, four o'clock. So my day spiraled completely out of control. You know when you like open a drawer and decide to organize it and then that derails into trying every piece of clothing that you own on, decluttering, reorganizing, folding, and then rearranging drawers? That was my day. But it was only my day because I wanted to fully understand and grasp how dire my bra situation was. So you guys know I love those lacy bralettes to wear under like muscle tanks or tank tops during the summer so that when it like peekaboos, it's really cute. So there were a ton of bralettes I hadn't tried on now that I'm a 32 A or B, depending on the brand. Um, so I went through everything. Bathing suits, bras, bralettes, lingerie, everything. And it was just a dark, down world, down world spiral of sadness, confusion, dent in my confidence. <laughs> However, it had sort of like an upturn. It turned positive because I realized that most of my bathing suits still fit and they in fact still look kind of cute. So it was very um, refreshing. Um, anyway, I kind of semi-prepped dinner. Uh, Parker and I are gonna go to the mall right now. Um, he's gonna be my emotional support. <gasps> don't shoot, don't shoot, no, don't shoot me. <laughs> you know, stop. We put those on top of the fridge to keep them away from the children. Do I need to keep them away from you too? He's shooting me with a Nerf gun. So Parker's gonna be my emotional support fiance while I try those on and then we'll come home, make dinner and uh, enjoy our Friday night. Maybe use our new Uncommon Question deck or my new Gary Chapman book. Um, but yeah, I'm not bringing you to the mall because um, it could go really well or it could go really bad, but uh, I'll update you later instead. I wanna focus on just trying the bras and brushing my eyebrows. Yeah, I really just wanna focus on trying on the bras, getting to a good place 
finding one. I just need one. I need one to start it, you know? I, just need, I need one that plants the seed, you crack the seed, it blooms, and then eventually you find your style, your brand, your size, and you can get every color. So all I need is one. So I'm gonna need you guys to retroactively or in the past send me some good luck vibes. Um, we're gonna go do that. I'm gonna show you guys how I've partially prepped dinner um, and then uh, we'll head out the door and I'll see you guys later. So you ready? Let's go see dinner. I'll see what you're doing, sneaking a snack. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when we get back or on our drive back, I'll call one of the girls and say, hey, just throw it in the oven. We have little rosemary potatoes. I chunked up a couple of carrots, same seasoning on everything, but I keep them separate just because, you know, bonus babies don't really like vegetables. They like starches. So we separated them so they can choose what they want. Then I have a pot of water that again, we'll call in advance and say, hey, can you turn that on and get that boiling, please? Um, just some, I don't know, organic mac and cheese to go with dinner. Um, and then a skillet that's gonna be for the little petite steaks that we're cooking. I'll do three with garlic, salt, and pepper, and then I'll do three with salt, pepper, rosemary, and some butter. So always have your steaks at room temperature before you cook them. Um, they cook better. The heat controlling is a lot easier, so when you put this in the pan, it's not gonna affect the temperature change. If you put a cold steak into the pan, it'll drop the temperature and you'll ruin your sear. Side tip for that. Um, anyway, that is it for now. We're heading out the door in the sweater that has been around the world. I swear I've seen every person I know in real life and on social media with this sweater. Target, you guys. It's like a $10 sweater from Target. I think I'm delaying the inevitable. Right, Parker? Let's go. Do you get that vibe? Let's do this. Yeah, we gotta go. Bye guys, wish me, wish me luck. Changuitos, as changuitos. <laughs> hey you guys, happy Saturday. All right, so I'm the world's greatest vlogger. You're welcome. The last time I checked in was yesterday afternoon. <laughs> oh my So we left off on the find a bra saga. I don't know if I have good news or bad news. We found two options. I like them, but I'm not crazy about them. I feel like it's something that I can't just rush. Anyway, I don't want to talk about it right now because it's the end of the day and I don't need to be ruining my good day. Today is Saturday. What did we do today? We got up, we made breakfast. Mm -hmm. Coffee, then pancakes, and then uh -huh. we went to the at and store. Oh, that's right. Yeah, saved a bunch of money. We combined our cell phone plans. So we're basically, we, we adulted real hard today. Then we came back, uh, scooped up the girls, uh -huh. went to Chips. Chips. The chips, hamburger place, remember? Yeah. We went to it. That We went to it and then not too long ago. After we ate, we took a walk there around the river walk, and then we drove, went across the freeway over to Legacy and mm -hmm. walked up and down, did some shopping at Legacy. Legacy West. We had some coffee. It was a nice day. Yeah. It was a nice day. It was cold, but it was sunny. And then... We had Starbucks. And then? And then we went to one of my favorite places in the whole wide world. Can you guys guess? I bet you know. Look at how bright he is. Starts with a Debbie and ends with a Mart. <laughs> he lit up like Rudolph over there. We went to Walmart. Went to Walmart. Because Parker's like on this, I'm going to make dinner tomorrow. I'm going to make dinner. I'm going to make dinner. And I'm like, I am nobody to fight you on this. <laughs> so he's going to cook for us tomorrow. Um, and that was our day. So it was just one of those days where... We were just all hanging out, enjoying each other's company. Really nothing interesting. Oh, you know what else I did? I organized my tax receipts. <laughs> because New Year's say me, it's just a big old pile. <sighs> you guys, I have an accountant. And I have a financial advisor. And my financial advisor is the sweetest person ever. I love, I love my financial advisor. However, he does not love me back. <laughs> Every year, it's the same story. He's like, you really have to use this app. You really have to organize better. You need to do this. This is literally why I pay him most of the time <laughs> um, to tell me what to do. Do I do it? Not really. I have this issue with being told what to do. You know, like it. it's very deep, dark, rooted. Being told what to do is not my favorite. So when he's like, use an app, I'm like, no. <laughs> so anyway, I have like this giant 
giant accordion folder where I'm like, I'm relatively organized. Like I'm not an animal. You guys have seen the way I live. Um, but I keep my receipts in, in like, so one's like travel, one is food, one is uh, beauty and fashion, like purchases, tech, uh, tech purchases, apps, upgrades, lenses, you know, SD cards, whatever. So I'm relatively organized, but it still doesn't stop being a giant fat folder of mismatched paper, um, stuff with no prices on it. Like sometimes, usually, you know like Sephora when you buy something? Why don't they put the price on the invoice? That really bugs me. Let's talk to Sephora about that. So a lot of invoices don't have prices, so you have to write them in. Um, it's My desk right now looks like all the receipts took some Molly and had a rave. Just saying. All right, so tomorrow is Sunday. I don't know what we're gonna do. All I know is Parker's making dinner. And that's it, that's all I got for you. That That is the excitement. Oh, you know what? Um, I haven't told him about the book I bought. Should we tell him about the book? See how he responds? See if he has a micro expression? <laughs> that was a micro. <laughs> I was telling the pandas that I got this book from Gary Chapman, the five love languages guy. Mm. And it's this book. It's called 100 Days to a Better Relationship or like, hold, hold Place. All right, you guys, you take the minutes. Count his, count his micro expressions. It's called The Love Language Minute for Couples 100 Days to a Closer Relationship. That's not a minute. Was it a minute or 100 days? Each page is a minute. Oh. So it's 100 minutes, 100 days. He's Virgo, you guys, he's a Virgo. It's like, he's literal, he's just scientific. He needs facts, numbers, figures. You start on day one, Parker. Let's skip to the, the day 100 and see how we did. I don't know if this is works that way. This is my life, you guys. I told him today, listen, Parker, I kept my receipt and original packaging. I will return you with a match membership. <laughs> All right, tell me about this book. What are, what are we doing? Okay, so this book is like a way to stay close to your couple. Every day there is a new topic, but this is why I was telling the pandas. I mean, you're either going to love this or you're going to hate it. So the day starts with a scripture, mm -hmm. either a proverb or whatever. It starts with a little bit of scripture. Okay, so far. It follows with the tiny little prayer. Mm -hmm. Nothing crazy. Yeah. Nothing crazy, Parker. I'm the religious one in this relationship. And then it's a topic for the day. So it'll be a topic that ties in the scripture and how it would help impact or open a conversation or dialogue between you and your partner. So it kind of forces you to kind of regroup at the end of the day or in the morning or whenever you decide to do it. I know a lot of couples get up really early and they have like their coffee together in either um, daily scripture or he's already yawning. <laughs> he's already yawning. Does anyone want it? Because I have my receipt. I'll return him. I'll tell you where to pick him up. He'll be in the clearance aisle. Match.com does not take returns. <laughs> does they, damn they it. don't take returns. I'm stuck. Anyway, I'm going to try and force Parker to do this, and I'll let you know tomorrow morning how it turns out, okay? I love you. <laughs> oh, wait. Hold on. Hold. Do you want to show him your socks? So, okay. A long... <laughs> long long time ago um and i was telling the girls today we got this really sweet package from our friend tammy tammy's the sweetest she's actually an avon rep and she has um a youtube channel and she's one of my like sweetest pandas ever um and i don't remember what we were tweeting about the other day tammy and i but she was telling me she's like oh yeah i'm like way older than your mom i'm like hey you're literally my demographic Let's hang, friend. Anyway, she sent us a really sweet Christmas package. It has a fuzzy, warm Sherpa leopard blanket in like gray and white, like the colors of our bedroom. It's so cute. I put it in the washing machine where I would show you. Um, and some warm socks. And the girls were like, oh my God, those are the best. And I was like, wait a second. I have socks that I need to give you from the PO box mail that I opened the other day when I was organizing my office, not throwing away my empties. <laughs> Um, so Parker just, I mean, he didn't even let them like cool off or anything. He just instantly put on his Alaska socks. So he's wearing socks all the way from Alaska. They're actually pretty cool. They look like graffiti or something. Let's see, look at those furry legs. Alaska. Alaska. 
Anyway, so thanks, Brianna from Alaska, for sending us awesome socks. She's really sweet, too. She sent us um, pairs for the girls and the boys. Guys, the boy socks are like this big. They're the cutest thing ever. Because when you see them next to Parker's socks and then next to the little ones, like, oh, they're so cute. You know what? I, I never told you guys, but we have a ton of pandas in Alaska. I think that's pretty cool. Supposedly, one of the most beautiful cruises you can ever take in the world is to Alaska. Did you know that? Uh, yeah, the, my guy sit close to a work. He took an Alaska cruise and said it was Like awesome. magical, right? I think she's done it like three times. Oh, wow. Yeah, a lot of people um, really, really enjoy Alaska cruises. Anyway, we're going to do this. Brianna and Tammy, y'all are the best. We love you. Thank you for thinking about us. You guys know the rules, though. You never need to send us anything. You never need to buy us anything. Your support, you know, watching our vlogs and leaving us your love and your little emojis on Instagram and Twitter and all that stuff is 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 gift enough. So we really appreciate your <sighs> loving us so much. This is where you say, yeah, thanks, guys. Yeah, you guys are the best. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Good night. Hey, hey, you guys. Happy Sunday. It's about 1.15. I am by myself in the car. All right. Being that this is a vlog and we are 100% honest with you guys, completely transparent all the time, let's talk about a couple of things. Um, So I had to get out of the house because I felt like... Do you guys ever feel or anticipate? You're like, ugh. I know the rage coming out today and I need to pacify and protect my family. <laughs> um, I haven't had my period in more than two years because of my um, anemia. My uh, gynecologist and my oncologist just tell me to skip placebo week on my birth control so I don't get a period. So I don't know when I'm PMSing. Am I always PMSing? Like, am I, am I in a permanent state of PMS or do I never get PMS? I don't, I don't believe that because we all know we have our, our not so good days. Anyway, today was one of those days where like every little itty bitty thing was kind of gonna like about to trigger me. And see, here's the thing. I think what happens with me often is I eat where I work, I poop where I work, I sleep where I work, I do chores where I work. My job is where I live and I never leave. And so I'm cooped up and all I do is I focus my attention, my energy on my work, my dogs, you know, obviously my family, but like task wise, um, my house organization, cleanliness and stuff like that. So I just feel like sometimes I need to get out. I need to get out before like my pot boils over. And it usually tends to boil over when I have a lot of housework and not a lot of support. And so I'm like, man, okay, I know what my job is and regardless of what it is and who it involves, I'm always gonna do a good job. So when I do something for someone that I care about, I put my all into it. And it gets frustrating sometimes that you start to notice when people only put 100% of themselves into things that only involve them, not everyone else. When it's for everyone else, it's just kind of hap hap haphazard. No, that's not even the word. It's like, I don't wanna say hap because it's so negative, but it's like, it's good enough. It's good enough, you know, I don't, I don't like that. I don't want good enough. If I wanted good enough, you know, I would have made a lot of different choices, but I don't want good enough. I want good, great, amazing. Anyway, so um, I just, every little thing was triggering me this morning. I think I've just, I'm, I'm frustrated that, you know, all the kids are on break and I can't keep my house clean. You know, uh, I haven't been able to get any work done because it's always noisy. The TVs are always on and super loud. And it's just one of those things where I was like, why am I complaining about being at home when no one's telling me to be at home? Shut the heck up call a ambulance and get your butt out the door. You have things you could be doing. And so I, I think I'm self aware enough where I know when to remove myself from a situation because I'm being irrational, you know? And I think it was just one of those mornings where if I discuss things in an emotional state, it will only get worse. So I have to remove myself from a situation, come back to normal, 
distract myself and then come back in a mental state where I could discuss things calmly and I'm not gonna get triggered because you know you said you were gonna do something and it's been four or five days and you still haven't done it you know it's, it's just not fair so we left this morning probably around 11 no 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 that's a lie because the mall opened at 12 so we left at around 11 30 we got to the mall at around 12. i went to victoria's secret because they're having your semi-annual sale and after i went to nordstrom i just i got bras that were good enough but they weren't i wasn't crazy about them they weren't very comfortable they were flattering enough they were cute enough but they weren't like yeah this is my bra like when I had my implants, and I had my implants, I would find bras and be like, yeah. You just feel cute in certain bras, you know? And they don't have to be purple or have glitter. I mean, they were nude bras, but I felt cute. So when I went to Nordstrom, I was just like, mm, this isn't doing it for me. So I went to Victoria's Secret because they're having their semi-annual sale. I bought no bras that were part of the semi-annual sale because after trying on like maybe 10 bras, I found the bra, like the bra that made me feel like a hot woman again. Yeah, I called myself a hot woman. So I found the bra, I got in three different colors, and then I went to um, PetSmart or Banfield to get Wesley more insulin and more syringes, and now we're on our way to go grocery shopping. It's funny how as a mom and as a significant other or future spouse, running errands that aren't even for yourself make you feel better you know it's like self-care go take a hot shower like that shouldn't be self-care going to buy wesley insulin to get out of the house shouldn't be self-care <laughs> but it's a season in life and this is where my season is at right now and we're just doing the best of it so we're heading to i still have decided if i want to go to an actual grocery store or target here's the thing this is my dilemma I need to get Mederma it's like a scar gel treatment my plastic surgeon gave me a scar treatment but it makes me insanely itchy Sam sent me a, a scar treatment that's supposed to be really good and it hurts and I don't know if maybe my skin isn't healed naturally on its own enough so that then I can go in with those big guns. Maybe I just have sensitive skin. Maybe I have sensitivity to some ingredients in the uh, two ointments that I have. But with my two cesareans, I use Mader Mederma scar treatment, the gel version, not the cream, the gel. And you can't even see my cesarean scar, like it's gone. Now that was like eight years ago, so maybe my skin's different now and I have different sensitivities um, because I'm older, I don't know, but I wanna try. So I think Target sells it, and so if Target sells it, I can go to Target and get that and the groceries. If Target doesn't sell it, then I can go to a grocery store and a pharmacy. But I'm like, I'm just hungry and I wanna go home. I wanna go home and maybe take a nap. <laughs> Take a nap with the Wesley. I really thought I was gonna be able to shake off this mood and I feel a little bit better, but I'm still like, mm-hmm. I, I haven't been able to talk myself down to an unemotional state. <laughs> I'm still at like the, um, three months ago, four weeks, two minutes, and two hours ago, do you remember? I'm still there and that's not, I don't like that Danny, so. Maybe Target will cheer me up. You know what, That's I'm gonna go Target. Target always makes me feel better. I'm gonna go to Target, get a couple groceries, come home, eat, and I think I'll be fine. But I think this vlog is gonna be pretty lame. It's gonna be long and stupid. Maybe a little lame. But, uh, c'est la vie? C'est ma vie? How do you say that's my life? Well, that's my life. I love you. Hey, you guys, happy Monday. It is about 9.20. Uh, Mern just left for school, so if you guys aren't familiar, my healer, Ernie, goes to like a doggy daycare twice a week um, to play with dogs that are her size, like big dogs. She really, really likes it. Plus, she's so spoiled. Like, Mr. Pitt is like totally her godfather slash uncle. He spoils her, she yells at him, and he's like, okay. Like, he spoils the heck out of this little girl. Um, and she just comes back so exhausted and so happy and what is this on my face? Oh my gosh. Okay, so here's the thing. Yesterday, 
was an awful day. Oh my gosh, I guess if I could say I was PMSing, that would probably be the equivalent of, but I feel like I get in pms -y mood. I hate the connotation with PMSing, you guys, because I feel like it totally does us women a disservice. It's like, we can't help it. I mean, guys get PMS too, they just don't recognize it. I don't know, maybe I just made that up, but I'm convinced that guys, guys have hormonal dates too. Anyway, I digress, as per usual. Um, how cute is this? It's a total cuddle puddle. I don't know if you guys can see that little nubbin behind me. Where's her face? Sophie, say hi to your friends. Look at how nice my boobs look. Check out that padded bra. You're welcome. We're about to talk about it. So today's Monday. Uh, Parker's at work. The girls are still sleeping. Um, I'm editing the vlog. I'm actually filming a little bit more of the vlog here, but um, I'm editing what I have so far. Um, the depo is my assistant. His computer skills are beyond this world for a chihuahua his size, or just a chihuahua in general, or just a dog. Anyway, um, so yesterday was, was not my, my best day. <laughs> I just went on a Netflix binge of Messiah and I don't know how I feel about it. Do you know when you watch a show and you're not really enjoying it, you're not really liking it, but you can't stop watching it? I think that's kind of what happened to me with Miss with Messiah. If you guys have seen it, let me know your thoughts in the comments. I was about to finish this vlog um, after I realized how awful this vlog was. And I was just gonna say, hey guys, that's, that's about it for now. But yesterday was just like a bad day. I was in a bad mood. I was like, why am I gonna vlog? No one wants, no one's gonna find that entertaining. I need to wrap this up. But as I was wrapping it up, I realized two things, three things. I didn't show you my gallery wall. We didn't talk about compression tanks. And I didn't show you the bras I got at Victoria's Secret. Holy fingers. Oh my gosh, look at how big my hands are. My grandma, God rest her soul, uh, would always be like, oh, show me your piano hands. I wanna see your piano hands. My Barbie, she would say, mi Barbie, enseñame tus manos de pianista. Show me your piano, pian pianist hands. Um, so that's what we're gonna do right now. I'm gonna wrap it up. I'm gonna tie this vlog up with a nice little bow. This is gonna be one of those presents that has amazing department store wrapping, but the gift inside is not that exciting. Let's talk about my tank top. So I told you guys about these compression tanks. I have to wear compression tanks because I had fat grafting for my explant. So if I don't have a really tight um, either girdle, Spanx, compression tank, or something around my midsection, my loins, loins, what is this, a romance novel? <laughs> my um, flanks, my flanks feel like they're on Fire. They feel like lava is melting down the sides of my flanks. That's the best way I can describe it. It's really uncomfortable only when I stand up or sit down or lay down. So if I do like a really drastic um, uh, torso movement is when it feels yucky. So I'm supposed to wear compression for the next four months. Um, so I looked into some from Spanx, which were like 60 or $70. And I was like, um, I'm sorry, first of all, your reviews suck. And second of all, that's a lot of money. So naturally I went on my deep dive Amazon search and I found these for $24. However, since talking to you guys about them, they've gone up to $32. Would I still pay the $32? Y'all better believe it because I actually tried on the Spank ones at Nordstrom and they do not even compare to how comfortable these are. So. A compression tank basically is designed to smooth everything out. Do I think I need smoothing out? No, I am definitely self-aware at how skinny and bony I am, but I do like to look smooth. I don't care who you are, what pant size you wear, or how big your boobs are, we all get lumpy in certain types of clothing. That's just the way it is. Or the type of underwear you wear, or how high the rise on the pants are. Everyone gets lumps, bulges, creases, dents, lumpiness. I said that already, you know what I'm, what I'm getting at. So anyway, the whole point of compression is um, to smooth things out, to make you feel more comfortable um, for health reasons, um, for working out. So I got mine in black, white, and nude. I would not recommend you get the white. The white is so insanely see-through, you could see your organs, okay? <laughs> Not fun. Hopefully you can get a really good view. Um, this is the black one, and I don't know if you guys can tell, like right here in this gap, you can see exactly how it's smoothing out this entire set. My camera's just focusing on the dogs, look at that. 
focus on me camera there we go so you can see the smoothing here now right here from this length here up it's a one ply so it's one sheet of fabric from here down to <laughs> hey. from here to here it's double and it's tighter so this up here is looser it's only one ply of fabric or one thickness of fabric down here from here to about and it goes pretty low so this can go all the way down mine kind of rides up if I'm sitting down and moving around a lot so it goes pretty low it doesn't ride up if you tuck it into your pants you guys it's super comfortable um, and so it's double so there's two layers of fabric right here I don't know if you can tell but there's two um, and so it keeps everything really like nice smooth in I think the brand is made in form um, I do have to kind of pull this down a little bit because I don't like things touching my armpit and the straps are thick so I don't know if you can tell but it's about an inch thick that's the bra, that's the strap. So if you wear narrower shirts or whatever, um, that might be something that you don't like, the thicker straps. But for now, for like winter purposes, you can tell it really just smooths things out very nicely. So if you have an upcoming surgery, um, if you want, I don't know, just the appearance of smoothness in your clothing, um, these tanks are really awesome. I'll link them down below. Don't spend that much money on Spanx. Um, when there is a very very suitable dupe or rather better dupe than the original so I actually really like this other thing that I want to talk to you guys about is um, after explant I've only been using these tanks as an actual undergarment or the Spanx Bralaluya bras those are still my favorite they may look like a training bra they may be really little but they're super comfortable the only thing that I don't like is that I have to pull them over my head however when I want a more feminine physique um, and you might disagree with this I know a lot of people have felt a little attacked by my comments of like my boobs are too small and they're like but little boobs are sexy too like I'm not saying that for me and my personal life, my personal opinion, what's on my body, I like to have curves because I'm already so tall and so skinny that um, a little, it's like it's like adding sprinkles to a cake. You know what I mean? Um, I can't just be all cake or just all plain white frosting. I need some, some zhuzh. So I was really um, disheartened I guess is the word I was a little disappointed after going to Nordstrom and getting bras that were good enough they weren't like I wasn't crazy about them and I worked for Victoria's Secret almost five years I know how rigorous our bra training is I know how often our bra training gets updated I know how often bra technology changes and I don't know why I didn't walk into a Victoria's Secret from the start. So I'm like really disappointed in myself for having wasted that much time. I walked into Victoria's Secret yesterday, you guys, and they were like, boom, 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 boom. Mm, you should probably do this. Upgrade in the cup. These cups are more separate. And I was like, I just flat out told the girl, I was like, I had explant surgery. Instead of my boobs going this way, they go this way. So I have the cup um, circumference, but I don't have the distance that comes out that's the problem so every bra that I put on I'm like well my cups are small but the cups are up here in the front instead of being over here on the side so I need a cup that goes like this not a cup that's like right here I was telling the uh, specialist Laura and Liz at Stonebriar help me you guys Laura and Liz amazing if you guys are in the in the area ask for Laura and Liz at that Victoria's Secret they are so helpful they they didn't make me feel weird they actually have experience with a lot of people that have had explant um, and I was like, I want a bra with padding. Give me a bra with padding. Before I had my breast augmentation, I used to stitch two Victoria's Secret very sexy bras. This was before they were filled with gel. This was before the NASA foam technology. This was before anything. This was just when it was just foam. Um, I used to stitch two of them together and that was my bra. It was all padding. Um, and that's why it was so easy for me to pull off breast augmentation and not really make a big deal about it um, because it always looked like I had boobs. So I was like, I need a bra that's gonna give me the illusion of like a nice little curve for when I wanna wear a fitted tank or um, I don't know, a tank that's really gonna emphasize that area of my body. 
I don't care if it's fake. Fake it till you make it, right? <laughs> so anyway, um, I found a bra that is not only comfortable, it has back flaps, and um, it gives the illusion of cleavage, even though there is no cleavage to be had. So anyway, I'm going to show you guys. If this gets weird, just close your eyes. I know a lot of you watch this with your kids. If you don't want them to see my fake boobage, then maybe watch this later. Um, but I have done a bathing suit video, so it's pretty much the same thing. So if you don't like talking about boobs, I'm, I'm sorry for the last 10 minutes and the next 10 minutes after this. <laughs> So the bra that I picked up is actually called the Sexy Illusions. It has adjustable straps that adjust all the way to the top. So I don't know if you guys are familiar, but bras usually have an ending point where they just go up to a certain distance and then they don't go up anymore. This one actually goes up as much as you want it all the way to the front. The back has an extended um, like flap. This is the actual back. So this is going to go all the way up to like your wing bone. <laughs> Let's say you had angel wings. We all do. This goes up and it kind of smooths everything out. This is laser cut fabric. So you're not going to get that um, cut or digging into your side from bulkier fabrics or lace. Um, and then the inside, let me see if I can get really good lighting. The inside of the bra has an overall just lift. I don't know if you can see that. That's how small my boobs are. This is all air here. I don't know what the technology that they have in here. It doesn't feel like a gel. It almost feels like an aerated foam, like one of those like NASA sponges. Um, and then just this here is the cup. The problem with the bras that I was looking at was because the cups were so um, small, they're, they're close together. I need cups that are wider, but they angle this way as opposed to this way or straight across. So I need them to be separate and um, come up towards like your armpit. So that's what this bra did. Let me show you guys. <gasps> Danny's showing me her boobs. Okay, if I were to take this off and show you actually what my natural boob flesh looks like now, it doesn't look at all how this bra makes it look. So the cool thing about this bra, and you can still see there's a little bit of gapping for me. And this gapping can just be fixed by adjusting the strap but I actually can't do that by myself because I was just trying the bra on this morning. So I still need to take it off, readjust it, and you can tell the difference the bra makes. Um, so the cool thing about this bra, like I said, the straps, you can adjust them all the way to the front. The push-up comes towards the middle as opposed to up high where we don't have any meat. <laughs> and then on the back, you can see how far up that goes and it really smooths out the back. Not to mention that when you're wearing a compression tank, everything gets smoothed out. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, you guys, this is a safe space. Um, I've always been super transparent with you guys, uh, whether it was about my divorce or struggling with motherhood or, you know, caring for sick babies. Um, and this is no exception. Um, the struggle to go from no boobs to breast augmentation to 13 years later having explant and now kind of rediscovering what my body is now is a total journey and since you guys are a part of this journey this is a part of it and i know a lot of you may be walking into a nordstrom just like i was and maybe not running into someone that is trained in recommending the best type of undergarment for your situation. So if you guys are struggling with that, um, you're not alone. Boobs are hard. And I was trying to explain to Parker, I'm like, I'm trying to think of a male body part or something in the male life that you can compare to boobs or the struggle that it is. And I couldn't really come up with anything. You know, it's, they're uneven, they're different sizes, um, they're different shapes, they come out to di on different angles, like, but well, you wouldn't understand, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you just don't get it. And so, it's important to go somewhere where you feel like you're heard and people can actually help you out. So, if you have boobs like mine, where it's like, instead of it looking like an orange, it looks like a fluffy pancake. <laughs> and I was trying to tell the girl, I'm like, I'm going to describe this to you in a way that's kind of weird, but it's like a perfectly round pancake. It's not saggy. It's still really perky, but there's no, like, it's not, it's not like a short stack of pancakes. <laughs> it's just
it's just one pancake. So I have the roundness, it just I just don't have the sphere <laughs> to it. And she's like, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. You need a bra that goes out like this, and it's like, it, there's not so close in the middle, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, tell me more. <laughs> Anyway, so I think that's all I had to show you guys, right? Oh, my gallery wall. Hold, please. Hopefully the girls aren't awake yet. I might, with my yelling, wake them up, huh? All right, you guys. So this is the entrance. And when you look up, ta-da, that's what you see now. So this is what Parker was helping me do the other day. We had a few pictures switched around. We had a few more pictures developed. This is kind of the middle. Um, that's our Christmas picture. These are the boys when they were little. This is our very first family picture ever. We went to the zoo, it was so cold, all the animals were hiding. <laughs> and that's it. How pretty is that? Anyway, that is it for this vlog. I think I'm going to split up this vlog in two parts. So if you're seeing this part, there's a part before it probably. Um, what are you doing? What you doing? Oh look, this is the, the blanket that Tammy sent us. <gasps> How pretty is that? Look at it, it's leopard, it's gray and white, and Wesley thinks it's the best. How bunky. Oh, okay. Anyway, you guys, so I'm probably gonna split this up in two parts. I'm not really sure yet, I haven't decided, but I just think the vlog's gonna be like two and a half hours. That's ridiculous, like, nobody has time for that. So if I do it in two parts, you guys can watch it at your convenience. Um, but for now, obviously, I will link and list all the bra and the compression tank and everything that we've talked about in this vlog. I know it's been like, what, five or six days that we've been vlogging. Like any and all my vlogs, um, this is just me being honest with you guys, um, sharing with you guys, um, maybe bringing some sense of normalcy into your life. So if you're feeling... Um, Un misunderstood, not heard. Um, it's very cathartic for me to share with you guys, as well as I think it's cathartic for you guys to hear that we all have glitch days. We all have days where um, we're frustrated because we can't find the proper bra. We all have days where we're sad because maybe one of our loved ones is sick and struggling. Um, this is a place of normal, reality. I'm not gonna do my makeup in my Lamborghini for you guys. <laughs> But I will be honest with you and I will share my struggles and I will sh share my life and um, hopefully you can find some friendship and understanding here because that's all we have to offer. <laughs> anyway, anything and everything will be listed in the description box below. I love you guys so much and you know what to do. If you found this video useful, entertaining, and learned something, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And until next time, this coffee break is over. Bye guys! Say bye to your friends. Say bye, guys. Say bye, Wesley. Wesley, say bye to your friends. Bubble, you say bye to your friends. Say bye, everybody.